Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to more Adventures of Miles Edgeworth cross-examining a bikini. <laughs> um, okay. If you are confused by that statement, you need to go back, back and, watch and watch every other episode of this Let's Play series. And the ones before that. Maybe. Only the Phoenix Wright Let's Plays. You don't have to watch Artie plays the Toy Story 2 action game in order to understand what's going oh, on no. here. Oh, no. Anyhow, I believe this is her last testimony. Okay. So, she saw, saw the, the murder at around 11 p.m. You are sure about the time? Yes, I was worried about it after all. Why was that? <laughs> because I have a strong sense of responsibility, especially at this time of year. I also maybe choked on something I was eating. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was eating jelly beans, and I might have choked on one. Um, okay, if you have, if you're choking, then that's no, totally acceptable. No, I meant like. It, like, it swallowing it, it went down the wrong yeah, pipe, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> Okay. The acolyte was being doused in freezing water at the time. I couldn't very well take it easy in the bath all ni night now, could I? So at 11, I decided to leave Hazakura Temple. Her estimation of the time seems reliable, at least. Please continue, sister. At least, like, I almost called her Vasquez. Um, Francisca. Von Karma. Yeah, Francisca. At least she's very, like... Like, she's calling her sister. Like, she, oh, that's she's, Yuri. She treats Sister Bikini well. Yeah, which is nice. She, she, she treats most of the females well, except, like, a lot of heart and Eeny Miny. Oh, yeah, she, she definitely whips. <laughs> whipped both of them. At least she doesn't discriminate with the whip, really. You asked Phoenix Wright to report the crime, correct? Right, right. The one who trampled me. It seems she is the type to hold a grudge. There isn't a phone in the main hall, so I sent him to the bridge. Phoenix Wright. He didn't even have his cell phone on him. I know, Francisca. It's so stupid. <laughs> he had forgotten it at home, apparently. I don't even know how that happens, because, like, <laughs> you need your phone for every... Well, actually, I guess that was back in the Not days of then, the... Not but... The... But still. Cordless, non-smartphones. Still. Like, but if you're going to some place that remote... There's... That's literally the whole reason you have a cell phone, is to take it places like that. What a naive boy, as always. Not only do I always carry my, carry my phone, but I always carry my whip in hand, too. Anyway, I was really scared, and it was taking him a while to get back. So I thought I'd go out by the main gate for a spell. From there I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated the snowmobile had been used. Oh, yeah. The one that Francisca probably photoshopped. Yeah. As I recall, Francisca photoshopped. I mean, <laughs> there was a snowmobile outside the main gate when I visited. That's it. That's the only one we have. It'll run no matter how much snow falls. Now, you're certain that the snowmobile was there at the main gate when you arrived? Yes, of course. It was parked in front of the gate. So, she had already gone, discarded the murder weapon, and returned by that time. I'm not sure if this is really relevant. What should I do? Press I further? When in doubt, always <laughs> press further. It's true. It looks very likely that the snowmobile is related to the case. I can't help but think that Iris used it, but for what? I'd better hold off on this, for now. Well then, witness, how long does it take to reach the bridge by snowmobile? Eh? <laughs> I need answers to every possible doubt. The snowmobile in question, was it still warm at that time? Ha huh? ha huh? ha huh? ha! Huh? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, eh? What do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? I'm playing to a slow crowd here. It goes without saying that using a snowmobile will heat, it, heat its engine. If it was still warm, then it means it was recently used. Ah, oh, I see! I never thought of that! Hmm, that's right! I overlooked that, too! Of course you did. Then answer the question, please, witness. I don't often go around touching hot engines. Hmm... However, now that you mention it, there wasn't any snow on it. Snow? Yes, for some reason only the snowmobile wasn't covered in snow. That's a pretty good indication. There wasn't any snow on it? Curses! It seems highly likely that the killer did use the snowmobile then, eh? 
How long does it take to get to the dusky bridge by snowmobile? The judge became significantly more Canadian from the last case to this one. Oh yeah. In the six year like, period. Like went He's... back to his roots, went back to Canada, drank went... two gallons of maple syrup, fought a bear, and then sang the Canadian. You thing. just offended probably every Canadian. <laughs> I know. I'm trying. Like, that's what it, but those are the stereotypes. It'd be like, Billy, dirty fat bear. No, but it would be like America. Like, oh, you go to America, eat, eat like five, five Big Macs. <laughs> five Big Macs. Like, have a bald eagle on each shoulder and then go sing, to the baseball sing the game. national anthem. <laughs> Even I haven't gone to a baseball Play game. Play football. <laughs> no, I didn't say I haven't had a bald eagle on my shoulder. But I haven't gone oh, yeah. to a baseball well, game. That's like a requirement. You, they don't yeah. make you a U.S. citizen until you have a bald eagle on each, each soldier. Each shoulder. Uh, each soldier. Each, 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 each soldier's soldier shoulder. <laughs> has a bird. A bird in hand is the... A, a bird in the hand is worth two on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it it's, takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than five... In that case, why didn't you use it yourself? You could have spared yourself some walking. Ah, uh, there's a reason for that. Have we got a moment for me to explain? I think that's why the question was asked in the first place. It was about a month ago. What is this going to be like? A lovely, like, I got injured. Oh, and I'm too afraid to use the snowmobile. That's... I'm worried, big bird. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's my <laughs> theory. I was driving my beloved little snowmobile, happy as can be. I'd fetched some water and was heading back and I, when I went and crashed into a tree. The tree and my back both went crunch. Just like that. Crunch. Hmm. Crunch. Maybe you should, like, check and make sure you didn't break a vertebrae. Eat crunch. <laughs> exactly. I haven't been able to find the courage to ride anything since then. Anyway, the killer must have used it. Okay, so you're afraid of snowmobiles, your back went crunch. That's that's a very bad thing to say about your anyone's back. That is back. true. Refresh our memory, how long were you knocked out for? Like I said, somewhere between 10 and 20 minutes. It's possible to get to the bridge and back in 10 minutes using the snowmobile. I have to concede that is more than enough time. Is that all you wish to concede, Miles Edgeworth? Just has the massive glare. Iris could have done that, she can drive a snowmobile after all. While it would have been possible time-wise, one element remains out of place here. Oh, and what would this mystery element be? Yeah. The killer's reasoning, your honor. Why did the killer do all of this? Why go to Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon when there are other methods? Hmm. Too many unanswered questions. Your response, Miss Von Karma? Wah! Turning to me for help over the slightest thing. Why don't you think it over yourself once in a while, Your Honor? What? She's as over the top as always. Anyway, whatever the reason, the fact remains that the defendant could have done this. The murder weapon was disposed of in the river. Another point to me, Miles Edgeworth. Another mystery to feed the fire. Was there any reason to go and throw away the murder weapon? Luckily, there is surely a problem with this testimony. Now all I have to do is start poking holes in this flawed account. Okay. Uh, I hate whenever we stop the game <laughs> when we read the first testimony, but then we don't pre like present well, because then we don't it want makes two-hour videos. But then it makes okay. me fresh, and I don't. So we have the tracks photo. Yep. Of the snowmobile. Well, I. Maybe the statement we can press is the, like, Iris, she can use the snowmobile and it's no, like, no, she can't. No, she can't. She's, She's stupid. She hit the wall. <laughs> um, what else do we got? We got the crime photo. Blah. Blah, indeed. Uh, time of death, 10 to 11 p.m. Bo cause loss of blood from stab in the back. Body That's from a pretty... after death. I mean, it's possible, but 11 p.m. was kind of like the last possible time that the death could have happened. Yeah. Which is why that seems weird. Uh, rang out. So, there- wait a minute. So they're saying, oh, the death could happen between 10 and 11 p.m. The bell for Lights Out, ha like, hit up at 10 p.m. It's yep. not like the bell rang and then somebody died and then somebody screamed and then- like, yep. it's, it's definitely... This is just the results of the autopsy. They determined right. it was within the hour, and then the prosecution's, uh, prosecution's like, well, the witness saw it at 11, so it was on the, the end of that time. Okay. Um, let's keep looking. The photo. Oh, look at me. <laughs> look at me. I've got a cool staff. 
the occult magazine. <laughs> Weather data. This might be important. Snow was 7 to approximately 1050. Lightning was 10 to approximately 11. So that still is Light pretty risky to ride the snowmobile in the out lightning there storm. in the lightning storm. Lightning struck Dusky Bridge at 1045 exactly because Larry's like, I saw it and probably caused it. <laughs> Wait, does that mean... Wait a minute. So basically it's like... Phoenix Wright, oh my gosh, dead body. Oh my gosh, go to the police. Da, da, da. While he's running, the bridge catches on fire. No, the bridge caught on fire. Like 15 minutes later, he heard Bikini scream. Oh. Went there, then went to the bridge, and it was like already Larry's burning out. Like, and Larry's just like, this is cool. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> the dog burning in hell. This is fine. <laughs> yeah, no. All right. Saw the murder at 11. After asking it be reported, I went out to the main gate. Woohoo. There saw. were tracks, which would be ridiculous with the weather. Um, okay. Takes 15 minutes to walk to Dusky Bridge, but less than five using one of those. Okay. Uh, maybe they threw the weapon into Eagle River and came back while I was knocked out. Even if it was 20 minutes, that's still... Like, if it was 10 minutes, it'd be like, you better be running and mm -hmm. doing everything. So, Okay. Iris could have done it. She can drive a snowmobile. I still think it's probably the snowmobile with the terrible photo where there's a crack in the wall. Oh, okay, we want to try it then? I would like to. Objection! Wait, that works? Wait, <laughs> wait I'm, I'm sorry, wait, what? Wait, there's two different ones. I want to see this. I guess it works if you present this on Iver's statement. Oh, okay. okay. It, you are completely 100% off, off but, but you got okay. the right evidence, but for completely the wrong reason. <laughs> okay. I admit this photograph proves something. It proves that the snowmobile was used on the night of the murder. You've finally accepted the inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgeworth. However, if what the witness says is true, why is there only one set of tracks? Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. What do you mean? Iris left Hazakura Temple, threw the weapon into the river, and returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Maybe Though you can go reverse and be super careful and go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> those from heading out to the bridge and those from coming back. Ah, you're right! Hm. You are forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by the snowfall. This removes your precious contradiction now, doesn't it? I see. While she was at the river, the snow stopped. Leaving just the return tracks in the snow. What do you have to say now, Miles Edgeworth? Is there a flaw in her theory? This idea that the snowfall covered one set of tracks? It's flawless. There's a contradiction. There must be a contradiction. Yeah, it's true. But I want to hear him praise Francisca. The tracks leading to the bridge were covered by the snow. I do not have any evidence that can dispute this claim. In which case, the rest is simple. Sister, who was the only person who could have driven the snowmobile that night? Anybody who could have stolen the key or hotwired it. Well, that would be... You can't hide it. I already know the answer. It could only be Iris. But, and the reason being... There's only one key for the snowmobile, and obviously no one else could steal it. A key that the defendant is responsible for. What? <laughs> Maybe she was irresponsible that night and let it be stolen. <laughs> Maybe she was like, Pearl, go for a joyride. And Pearl's like, Woo! Can I bring the pot roast? <laughs> <laughs> She's actually just joyriding on the uh, snowmobile now. now. It's like, where's Pearl? Can find her? She's just like, yeah. Maybe there's two <laughs> snowmobiles. She took one, and then those tracks got covered. But Jeannie like, had no reason to hide that there were two, though. Sure. Order, order. Now I don't feel like a clueless puck bunny. I understand everything. If the defendant did indeed use the snowmobile, which means Iris is most definitely the murderer. Your Honor, please wait a moment. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? There is one gaping hole in Miss Von Karma's claim. Oh. I'm not sure if I care for your response, Mr. Edgeworth. Next time, bring up whatever issues you have earlier. Do you understand? Oh, ouch. <laughs> I should have noticed it sooner. Luckily, I have time travel capabilities. <laughs> the tracks to the river were covered by snow. What a nice theory. However, Miss Von Karma, that is impossible. Would you care to explain? 
why there is a rude index finger currently pointed in my general direction. You're in a courtroom. It happens all the time. No need. The evidence will do all of the talking for me. On the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusky Bridge. In order to dispose of the murder weapon, the outgoing tracks were erased by snow. Or so claims Miss Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary, eh? Evidence that the outgoing tracks were not covered by snow. Maybe it's the weather report, because... The... Let me see it. The snow went to 1050, meaning that if they were... But that means if the murder happened at 11, like she said, that the snow would have stopped. So... Indeed, that is that true. Would have happened. It's this magazine, Your Honor. Here is the evidence. What do you have to say, Your Honor? This reminds me of when I was a little hockey go goon in training. When I was a child, I hoped for school to be canceled due to heavy snowfall. Perhaps, Mr. Edgeworth, it would have been better for you had court been snowed in. That's all this evidence says to me, in any case. Nothing else? Nothing else. Oh, dear. You seem to have missed Miles Edgeworth. Urgh! He's very good about it, though, as opposed to, right, who's like, Don't you think this could be? <laughs> be? <laughs> According to the witness's testimony, the incident occurred after 11 p.m. In which case, there has to be evidence that can undeniably prove something doesn't match up. I wonder what Edgeworth was like in high school. Who's the emo kid? I don't think so. Witness, please tell us again what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course. This means that the weapon was thrown away after the time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. It is the weather report for Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. The weather report? Snow started to fall at 7pm, but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11 p.m., the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks after that time to have been covered up. Ah! Uh, order! Order! Very well, then. It looks like Miss Von Karma's claim has been snowed in. Wah! It's too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. Nice pun. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic of you to rely on the weather of all things. Answer me this then. When is a weather report ever correct? I don't know. You should... Dr. Turner Gray certainly disagrees. The, the, the news lady ruined my suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, no, no, no. You've got it all wrong. This isn't a forecast. This is actual data. Gah! Forecast data. All weather reports have some inaccuracies. It may have still been snowing in the vicinity well past 11 p.m. Hmm... It's true. We cannot be totally sure, eh? What? what How did she pull that off? It had stopped snowing at Hazakura Temple when the murder took place. You need to provide conclusive evidence of this. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. Very well. I, too, cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning that testimony. Huh. You can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, Miles Edgeworth. Very well, then. Mr. Edgeworth. Where is your evidence that it had already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? Uh, well... Maybe the staff. After... No, it was buried in the snow. Was it? I thought it was sticking <laughs> out. Ha it was like half in, half out, kind of. Okay. Your response, Miss Von Karma? It looks like... It is still snowing in your heart, too. Shivering in the cold, you are closing your eyes to the truth. And to think you just arrived after a long, tiring flight from Germany. <laughs> that was poetry. Pure poetry. <laughs> your jet lag must be over now. This <laughs> evidence is only going to freeze my case solid. Respond, Miles Edgeworth. Even if it is snowing in my heart, at the time of the murder, it had already stopped snowing at Hazakura Temple. I thought it could be the staff because... Well, that doesn't tell us anything. It doesn't, but we found it not buried in snow. Is it in the crime photo? No. No, it's it not. Was, it was a little more to the left, so... Yeah, staff doesn't tell us anything about the snow, unfortunately. Well, the victim didn't get buried. There's no... 
There's no snow on her. That's true. Would that work? Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being, whether or not it was snowing in that courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right. But proving that is... Incredibly easy. If we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, I'm referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered with snow. With just one exception. And that is... The victim herself, Miss Elise Donum. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. It had stopped snowing when she was killed, that's why. <sighs> In other words, if the killer really did go to the Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then in this photograph, there should be two sets of tracks. No! Ah! Order! Order! Just what are you- ah! Just what are you suggesting, Miles Edgeworth? To be honest, I am not entirely sure myself, but this is simply what all of the facts point to. That night, someone used the snowmobile to leave Hazakura Temple. From the tracks left, it can be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snowing. Of course it was, because those tracks were gone. Then when this person returned to Hazakura Temple, the snow had stopped. Thus, the return tracks remained. I say something. This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There's only one key for the snowmobile. Furthermore, on the night in question, we know that the defendant had it. The key was found in her room after the murder. Which can only mean that night. Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. I actually think that Pearl might have done it. I think that Pearl was like, but I have to go see, like, Mystic Maya and, like, have her for- Like, she can't freeze in the water! And, and, like, she was like, I'm gonna go read books! Yup! And then she ran into Iris's room. Because Iris was still out, like, with people. She yeah. was still doing things. So she ran to her room and found the key, took the key, went to Dusky Bridge, maybe went over it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Drive a snowmobile over Dusky Bridge. <laughs> not no. with it. I'm saying, oh. like, maybe she went over, checked on Maya, maybe no nothing happened. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know how it would work later. But then she might have gone back and then maybe, like, kidnapped? I don't know. But Iris said that she never went there. That's why I think... I should probably press on this point some more when I get the chance. Snowmobile can't pro uh, can't cross the suspension bridge, so she must have left it on the Hazakura side of the bridge and then crossed on foot. I thought she like left the snowmobile on, just like, <laughs> and that's what I thought she was gonna say. That sounds right. But what's odd is when I left Iris and returned to Hazakura Temple. I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. You must have just failed to see it, sister. Maybe. But when I made it back to Hazakura Temple... It was there, by the main gate. The snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. So wait, it was covered in snow one time, but then when she left, it wasn't but covered in snow. But that isn't possible! So... Basically, they're saying that Iris must have taken it to the inner temple- to the bridge, Gone to Inner Temple, Bikini's like, oh, there you are, Iris, left. But she's like, I didn't see it by the bridge, and I saw it in the room. I saw it where it's supposed to be, and it was covered in snow. No one had used it. And we're Maybe. like, that's not possible. Maybe what happened was Pearl found the hood. Put the hood on. Pearl is, like, two feet shorter then, Someone has a really bad back and maybe bad eyes. I'm saying and... Iris. She's way shorter than Iris is. Yeah. What I'm saying is she put on the hood, went because she wanted to see Maya, and then was like, oh, it's Iris. Like, she was like, it's Iris. Okay, I could go back. Like, finally, I could take could my back. How could you mistake Pearl for Iris? You couldn't. Well, there's already been a lot of stupid things that have happened. 
I mean, that you're not wrong. There's already been a lot of... Yo, no one's gonna know that I'm would... not Phoenix Wright. And <laughs> that would also explain why we haven't found her as well. Because maybe she's still at the temple with Maya. Because hmm. Iris never went, supposedly. Right. Maybe... I mean, we didn't see Phoenix Wright running through the forest. Maybe he took the snowmobile and we don't know. No, he didn't. Okay. Maybe, order, uh... order, order in the court. What does this all mean? <sighs> So then what the snowmobile, what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. If it had been, then the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. Photoshop does wonders. All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used the snowmobile to return to Hazakura Temple. Hmm. I never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. I think we've arrived at this point due to the witness. Yes, yes. I've nothing more to add. I've told you everything. Everything that I know. A million cyclops pop up. <laughs> well then, that still leaves us the same problem. If only there were someone, a witness who could testify to having seen the snowmobile. Larry Butts! <laughs> a witness, huh? Was there no one out walking, perhaps, near Dusky Bridge on that night? Maybe who set it on fire? I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out walking that in that. <laughs> Unless they had something really important to do. Hmm. That's a shame. Hold on. I know a certain Something idiots. is coming to me. An idiot may well have gone wandering out in that subarctic night. Your Honor... I actually have an idea. There may be one individual able to help us. R really You know of someone that might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder? I don't know for sure if he saw it or not, but there are two things about him that I do come to my mind. Which are... First, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. And the second being... This individual that I am thinking of went uh, of went wandering outside on that cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, who is this idiot you're talking about? <laughs> it's Phoenix Wright. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though. <laughs> he need a coffee. Just what's the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeworth? Are you saying that this is the person who was near Dusky Bridge that night? Uh, I did think so, however. Ah! You're the wandering idiot, Miles Edgeworth. Cool off before you try to take me on again. Ouch. Urgh. What was I thinking? This is the perfect chance to drag him onto the stand. <laughs> Wait, if we do something stupid like Phoenix Wright... Nope, never mind. The Phoenix Wright is in the... <laughs> Francisca, <laughs> you're the wrong for an idiot. This guy must be a product of Jean-Luc de Leduc's guide to obnoxious French painting. This is Larry Butts, the student of the victim Elise Dono. Her student? Interesting. Why was he wandering on the night of the murder? Th that's... I could tell them all about his designs for Iris, but it may cost us his credibility as a witness before I even call him. He is, after all, an artist. He was perhaps searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him. Although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. And so, this unfortunate, unreliable looking man, what exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him right here in this courtroom. I love how it's basically two prosecutors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, let's be fair, I don't think Iris is going to get it off the hook at all for this. <laughs> so it's just like two people like, ah, She did it! She did it! <laughs> like, he's not even like, well, it could be someone other than Iris. He's like, oh no, it's he's Iris. Like, we just have to figure out the whole story. <laughs> Summon this youth as a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he's in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. Larry. You may have escaped me yesterday, but today I'm going to get everything out of you. Well, like, you, he didn't rage. escape you, you rage quit. You did rage quit. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> the court will now adjourn for a 20 minute break. Miss Von Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. Oh, that's gonna go well. 
Understood, Your Honor. Like, I didn't know there were hot female prosecutors. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. I was just like, great. She's going to tell him to shut up. <laughs> Good. Well then, court is now in recess. To be continued. Another to be continued? She had like five testimonies. Okay, but like not today when we were doing it. No, she only had one. She only had one. But it's still a half hour episode. That's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Tune in next time. Larry Butts is going to wow. the stand. Wow, okay. <laughs> I told you it was 30 minutes. I yeah, didn't realize. we just checked. Anyhow, look forward to that. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.